I got a tip for mounting a workpiece to a spoil board on your CNC router and I unashamedly with pride swiped this tip from the master luthier over at Crimson Custom Guitars in the UK, Mr. Ben Crow. Now, he didn't invent this method either. One of his apprentices told him about it and he scoffed at it like I did. But it turns out this really, really works well. And in fact, um, double-sided tape for me is a thing of the past. I despise double-sided tape. I absolutely hate it. If you've worked with it for more than a week, you know that either the adhesive on it is so strong you can't get it off, or it, if it warms up, it gets so weak that a template will move or your workpiece will get released. Well. I'm going to show you a little technique that I, again, swiped from Ben Crow at Crimson Custom Guitars. Link in the description box below. This works like a champ. I'm really, really impressed. Let's take a look. This is a piece of pine that I want to mount to this uh, spoil board on my CNC router. Now, before, what I would have done was drill a hole down here somewhere and then drill another hole down at the other end and drive a screw down into the spoil board. As you can see, that's what I've been doing. Now, I used to use double-sided tape when in those uh, situations where I didn't want to use screws or clamps of any kind. Well, I've given up on the double-sided tape and now I use plain old masking tape cyanoacrylate glue and activator. Now I use, as you can see, FastCaps 2P10 and this is not a paid endorsement. They didn't give me this. I bought it down at my local hardwood supplier. But they really make an excellent product and the activator works with, it doesn't matter which of their glue formulas you happen to get. I use the medium, but only because I prefer it. Now I hear you already, what the heck is he going to do with that? Well, very simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my workpiece, put a piece of masking tape on the back of that, put another piece of masking tape down on the spoil board, then use the uh, 2P10 to glue those two pieces of masking tape together. No, I'm serious. Watch. Okay, this is so simple, it's almost not worth describing it to you. Now, all I'm doing is laying down some masking tape on the spoil board. And I lay the masking tape down uh, so that it's longer than the workpiece, so that I've got enough on either end to help me lift it off of the spoil board after it's done. After the part's finished running, that is. Then I take, I have a little wooden roller um, that I burnish it down onto the spoil board with, but you can use a putty knife or um, a little rubber squeegee for like spreading body filler or credit card or whatever you'd like. And basically all I'm trying to do is get rid of any air bubbles or wrinkles in the tape and then apply another piece of tape somewhere approximately in the center of the workpiece that I'm wanting to clamp down and do the same thing. Um, I let the ends of the tape overhang the workpiece by about an inch on either end and then I come back with the roller or the squeegee or whatever and kind of burnish it down as well. Again, I'm just trying to get rid of any air bubbles or any wrinkles in the tape because I want it nice and smooth. Um, then I kind of use my square, kind of eyeball it into position, figure out uh, where I'm going to apply the glue. I tend to uh, apply the glue about an inch away from either end of the uh, workpiece, meaning um, I'll start about an inch in from the end uh, of the, where the workpiece is and then lay down just one stripe of the uh, glue and end it about an inch before the end of the workpiece. Then take the accelerator, spray it on the tape, 
that's I've stuck to the workpiece, grab my square again, and just use that square to make sure that the workpiece is uh, square to my uh, x-axis. And um, you get one shot at this, so you got to make it count. And then I just press the workpiece down onto that tape that's on the spoil board and I'm pressing firmly all the way across running back and forth and it's done it's bonded on there and uh, won't budge it won't move Now we come to one of the main reasons why I like this method so much, and that is peeling it up off of the uh, spoil board. And I just grab a hold of the masking tape, hopefully my arm's not blocking this, give it a little pry with the putty knife, and it's coming right off. So you're looking at just basically peeling off masking tape. And it looks like I got my depth of cut a little bit wrong. Because this should have come right off. Yeah, I got my depth of cut off a little bit here. Because those should have cut right out all the way through. But as you can see, I used no tabs, and I'll have to clean that up on a sander, but other than that, 
it did just fine. These pieces cut right out and take off the masking tape. And there you go. So there it is. That's a easy method. It's cheaper than double-sided tape. It's a lot more secure than double-sided tape. And it works, as you've seen. So I use it in all kinds of applications. I mean, I've used it to attach a workpiece to a tabletop and then used a hand plane on it or attaching small parts to a, directly to the tabletop to use a random orbit sander. Uh, it holds securely. It... Uh, is cheaper than double-sided tape and it's not a single-use item. I mean I still have full use of the super glue on anything else and same with the masking tape you know but there's no denying it works I mean you watched me cut out eight trim rings for a cigar box guitar pickups and uh, the workpiece never budged. Yeah this is soft pine but I've also used it on red oak and I've used it on maple I've used it on poplar I've used it with all kinds of things it just works, and um, that's good enough for me. Well, thanks for sticking with me so long. I know this video got pretty long. I do appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up down there if you got anything useful out of this, and um, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.